Sunday, November 27th, the first Sunday of Advent. The language used in the Gospel passage today can lead to extravagant interpretations, or even rants, on the end of the world and the punishment of God. It can also be reduced to the invitation to be always ready because death can come suddenly and take us unprepared. These interpretations stem from a lack of understanding of the apocalyptic literary genre that was widely used at the time of Jesus, but is quite alien to our mentality and culture of this age. One principle we should always keep in mind, the gospel by its very nature is good news, the message of joy and of hope. Whoever uses it to instill fear and anxieties is using it incorrectly and is missing the true meaning of the text. Let us recall the context in which today's passage is given. One day, the disciples invite the Master to admire the magnificent building of the temple. Instead of sharing in their justifiable pride, Jesus surprises them with a prophecy. You see all these things? I assure you, not a stone will be left upon another here. All will be torn down. Jerusalem, who refuses to be converted, will fall. Amazed, the disciples ask him two questions. When will this happen? And what are the warning signs? Instead of satisfying their curiosity, Jesus responds by introducing a teaching that is valid for people of all times. It is necessary to remain vigilant. To elaborate, he cites three examples. The first is taken from the biblical story in Genesis. In the days of Noah, there were two categories of people. Some who thought only of eating, drinking, and being merry. They were unprepared and perished in the flood. Others were vigilant, attentive, and alert. They realized that the flood was approaching. They were saved, and they began a new humanity. Just as the flood came suddenly, so too, Jesus says, will the ruin of Jerusalem. Just as in the days of Noah many died, so too, Jesus says, will the Jews who will not recognize him as God's messenger and will not listen to his word. Those who have their eyes and hearts open to recognize and accept his message will be saved and will give birth to a new people. The second example is inspired by the activities that men and women do every day, working in the fields and preparing the dough to make bread. They engage in work, earning a living, eating, drinking, and marrying. The criteria to pick one of the two who do the same deed is a good subject for meditation. Jesus has mentioned about people doing the same deed, and one of them gets justified by God, while the other does not. The Pharisee and the tax collector went to pray. The tax collector was justified because he realized that he was unworthy of the blessings of the Lord. Many people made offerings in the temple, but the offering of the widow was accepted because she had offered all she had. Jesus speaks also about people who do charity. The ones who do not let the left hand know what the right hand is doing are accepted by the Lord. So, the criteria of being accepted by God purely depends on the attitude and intention behind what one is doing, more than the action itself. The Lord invites us to set the intentions of our every deed right. Those who are overwhelmed by the cares of this world are left, meaning that they are not involved in the new reality of God's kingdom. The decision to be taken is urgent and dramatic. It comes to choosing between life and death, which is why Jesus insists, keep watch because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. It's worth repeating, Jesus is not coming to the showdown at the end of our lives. He comes today with his saving judgment. 
The conclusion takes up the theme of the passage and applies it to the disciples of every age. So be alert, for the Son of Man will come at an hour you least expect. We know what it means to miss favorable opportunities. So many times we have had the experience. The more surprising and unexpected they are, the more they fall outside of our criteria of judgment, then the easier we let them pass. The visits of God in our lives are always difficult to grasp because they do not conform to the human wisdom with which they are incompatible. They are in contrast with our current mentality. But only the one who is vigilant will know how to recognize these opportunities. And only the one who vigilant is saved here and now. Thank you.